Hi everyone, in this video we will cover the liver function blood tests. By the end of it, you will understand what each component of the test means and how to interpret them to help make a diagnosis. If you find the video useful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. These are the main components of the liver function test. High ALT, AST, ALP and GGT all reflect some form of damage to the liver, whilst bilirubin, albumin and prothrombin time reflect the liver's ability to conjugate and synthesise protein. Firstly, let's look at the markers of liver damage. ALT and AST are often raised when the liver cells, or hepatocytes, are being damaged by a disease process, whereas ALP and GGT will be raised when there is a problem with the flow of bile which carries bilirubin from the liver to the small intestines. This is known as cholestatic damage. ALT is found predominantly in the liver parenchymal cells, and so is released into the blood when these cells are damaged. AST is also found in liver parenchymal cells, but additionally it's present in heart muscle, skeletal muscle, kidneys and the brain. This makes ALT a more specific test for determining liver damage. When interpreting ALT and AST, we can look at the ratio between them. An ALT greater than AST is associated with most liver disease, but AST greater than ALT can be associated with liver cirrhosis or acute alcoholic hepatitis, particularly if AST is more than two times greater than ALT. A high AST could also be due to non-liver causes, for example, myocardial infarction or rhabdomyolysis. Some common causes of liver damage are alcoholic fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, viral hepatitis, drug toxicity, autoimmune hepatitis, and liver cirrhosis, which is the end process of prolonged damage to the liver. ALP and GGT are tests for cholestatic damage. ALP is found in the bile duct and bone, so damage to either of these will cause ALP to be released into the blood. GGT is just found in bile duct cells, making it a more specific test for cholestatic damage. So if you see a rise in both ALP and GGT, you can be fairly confident it's due to cholestasis. A rise in ALP alone is caused by damage to bone. To help distinguish whether LFTs are showing you hepatocellular injury versus cholestasis, we can compare the rise in ALT with the rise in ALP. If the ALT is 10 times greater than it should be, with ALP being less than 3 times greater, it's probably hepatocellular injury. If ALT is less than 10 times normal value, with the ALP over 3 times greater than its normal value, there's cholestasis. It's also possible to have a mixed picture of liver damage and cholestasis. To finish, we're going to look at the markers of synthetic function. Bilirubin is a breakdown product of haemoglobin, so it's released into the blood when red blood cells haemolyze. This is usually a natural part of the red blood cell cycle, where bilirubin will travel to the liver. A healthy liver will conjugate bilirubin, which means a molecule is added to it. Conjugated bilirubin is water soluble, so it can be excreted via the kidneys into the urine. Some bilirubin is also excreted via the bile duct into the faeces. Bilirubin is raised in some diseases. When it reaches a level of 60 micromoles per litre in blood, the patient will appear jaundice. Causes of jaundice can be divided into prehepatic, hepatic, and posthepatic. Prehepatic jaundice is due to excess production of bilirubin, i.e. pathological hemolysis. Since this process occurs before the bilirubin has reached the liver, it will be unconjugated. Hepatic causes of jaundice are those that prevent the liver from processing bilirubin efficiently. Posthepatic jaundice is caused by anything that blocks the flow of bile from the liver to the small intestines. We can help distinguish between these three causes by asking the patient about changes in colour to urine and stool. A conjugated jaundice will cause the urine to become darker, since conjugated bilirubin is water-soluble and will end up in the urine. 
post-hepatic jaundice will also cause stools to become pale, since it blocks the flow of bilirubin containing bile into the small intestines, where bilirubin would usually give stool a darker colour. Albumin is the most abundant blood protein in the body. Its main functions are to maintain oncotic pressure in the blood, which stops fluid leaking out of blood vessels, and it's also a transporter protein for other molecules in the blood. Albumin can be low in liver damage, as it can't be synthesised as fast. It can also be caused by excessive loss of albumin through the kidneys in nephrotic syndrome. It's also low during an inflammatory response. Finally, prothrombin time is a measurement of how long our blood takes to clot. More specifically, it looks at the clotting factors in the extrinsic pathway of blood coagulation. I'll cover this topic in another video. PT can be high if a patient takes warfarin, which means the drug is working. Also, in vitamin K deficiency and liver damage. So to summarise, we've covered all the major components of LFTs and how they can be used to identify liver damage, cholestatic damage and reduce synthetic function of the liver. Thanks for watching and feel free to check out my other videos on interpreting blood tests. See you next time. Thank you.